Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam, and in this video, I'm going to be planting three deciduous azaleas. These are actually new introductions from the Southern Living Plant Collection. This one's called Solar Glow. It has this bright orange flower. I'm also planting one called Solar Flare that's a little more yellowy orange. Uh, I've waited almost too late to plant that one. I only have like one flower left on it, but I'll show you that in a minute. I brought this one over to these uh, Autumn Bonfire Encore azaleas just to talk about some some differences between uh, these azaleas. They're both in the rhododendron family. Uh, these deciduous azaleas are actually native uh, to the United States. They're really amazing. They're one of my favorite plants. Uh, they're fragrant many times. Not all are fragrant. Uh, some of them have light fragrances. Some of them have uh, very strong fragrances. Usually it's honeysuckle-like. They come in really vibrant colors. You can get yellows and pinks and oranges and reds and you know just really, really super vibrant colors. The growth habit is one of the main differences. You can see how this deciduous azalea wants to go very vertical. Uh, they tend to be tall and narrow growing plants. Uh, this variety gets about six to eight feet. There are varieties that can get as high as 15 feet. Deciduous azaleas are a lot more cold hardy than the evergreen azaleas. These can grow up to zone four in some cases. Uh, this particular variety right here is a uh, zone five to zone nine. The evergreen azaleas are usually going to be, like Autumn Bonfire is going to be six uh, to nine or six to ten. Uh, the evergreen azaleas are going to stay low and mounding and uh, typically require just very little work uh, at all because they ha have that growth habit without having to do a whole lot to them. Whereas the deciduous azaleas are going to try to almost become tree formed. Um, they'll occasionally need to be a uh, top prune typically in a in someone's yard you know um, they, they'll become unruly and, and kind of thin at the bottom if you don't occasionally take some of the top out you would do that after it flowers these have the flower buds on both of them are set in the late summer or fall and then bloom in the spring of course these are encore azaleas so they'll put on some growth after they flower and then flower again and then put on some growth again and flower again they're very different than uh, the traditional uh, evergreen azaleas. Uh, these are more like the traditional azaleas where the buds are set in the summer and then they carry them through the fall. And I, I've always loved these deciduous azaleas because the buds form on the top in the late summer and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until they bloom. And the anticipation that's built by these is I, I really like a lot. Rhododendrons do that as well. Evergreen rhododendrons uh, also do that. Now, big similarity, and this is why I wanted to bring this over here specifically to these Encore azaleas, is I think when you think rhododendron and you think azalea, uh, most people are immediately going to think shade. And uh, that's true with traditional azaleas and it's true with most evergreen rhododendrons. These Encore azaleas need four to six hours of direct sun and will tolerate even more than that. Same thing with this deciduous azalea. The other thing they have, another thing they have in common is they like uh, well-drained soils and my soil doesn't drain all that well. So I always leave azaleas, rhododendrons, anything in this family of plants, I wanna leave them up a little bit. They all have very fibrous roots that stay near the surface. So I'll dig a fairly wide hole when I plant them. I use some pine bark soil conditioner in my clay soils. And I typically like to use pine straw when I can with azaleas and rhododendrons. It just dries out a little better. Uh, I feel like if I use hardwood mulch, uh, and you can use hardwood mulch, but if you use it every single time, sometimes it can build up and end up keeping your azaleas and rhododendrons a little too wet over time. You know, let, let it rot away almost completely, occasionally, before you uh, remulch. But like I say, I'm gonna plant three of these. I'm gonna leave them high and dry. They're against a wood line here, but the sun's gonna come up and stay on them for about eight hours of direct sun before they go back in the shade in the afternoon, and that should be perfect. So this is a couple of weeks after I had planted these, and I wanted to show you how beautiful the foliage is, even after they have flowered every spring. The new foliage comes out with kind of a burgundy uh, tint to it. It was darker than this, and then the leaves mature, and they're big, beautiful leaves. They can end up six inches long or so as the plants mature, but I put one uh, solar glow there and a solar glow there, and this is that solar flare that has that yellower flower, but you can see how beautiful these are even after they flower every year. So thank you very much for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos.